Uh, I guess um, I promised before that, um, uh, so, we, so we talked a lot now, sort of finishing up the anxiety and depression unit. Um, we'll move on into Tourette's, but before we do that, um, uh, I think maybe half or so of you have had a chance to view um, the video that I posted about my own experiences with anxiety and depression. Um, the short version is uh, that I had pretty severe anxiety and depression for um, uh, for about a year and was basically non-functional for a year after I finished my PhD, um, wasn't able to work sort of uh, and so on. Um, uh, there was um, a night that I came very close to but didn't actually um, attempt suicide um, and uh, and you know now I'm sort of being treated more it caused me to sort of rethink what I was doing I've now found a job that I like which is great and all um, but uh, um, I promised earlier that uh, even though I, I didn't spend the whole class period sort of discussing all of this, the, the things that happened to me um, and, and that I experienced, um, I did promise that I would sort of provide a time if people wanted to ask me questions about my own experience. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> now that you've just been thinking about all the bad sides and so on of, of all of this stuff, any open opportunity to ask me any questions you have about my experience if anybody has them. Yeah, sure. Why did you start medication? Why did I start medication? Um, because I was really in a bad place. I needed something. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, um, it almost wasn't a question. I was, uh, you know, I was um, uh, like, uh, so, so I, I, I mean, my, my, I couldn't hold paper without my hands just like sweating through it for like all the time. Um, and, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't work. I couldn't, um, I couldn't have friends over or nothing. And so it wasn't really even a question of if I was going to be starting to take medication. It was a question of like how much and how soon can I see a psychiatrist to start, to start figuring this out. Actually, one of the, one of the things that was the most, uh, Frustrating. I almost forgot about this early on. Is it took forever to find because like it sort of hit me so suddenly, and so it took forever to find a psychiatrist who I could um, uh, who I could uh, even see on such short notice because I just gotten off student health, so I couldn't go on this. anyway. Um, and so um, uh, and so uh, yeah. So 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 I, I was like, you know, wh what do I need to take and when and how can I get how can I get um, and so uh, you know so I. They started me with Prozac and um, and some benzodiazepines. Um, I've switched to to another one um, called um, uh, 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 Cipralam. What's I can't remember the name of the um, uh, Lexapro. That's the stuff. Um, and um, and uh, Clonopin, which is a slower acting benzodiazepine that has a much less of a chance of of overdose and addiction because it acts much more slowly. It doesn't give the same sort of euphoric calm, but just sort of a general kind of relaxation. Um, and so. Um, yeah, I've actually tried to go off the medication a couple of times, and for me, that's never really worked out very well. And I just sort of now have decided, like, why would I even put myself through trying to go off the medication when I work better with it and it doesn't have anything going on that I can't deal with otherwise? So, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, sure. So, like, what side effects do you have? Um, so, uh, I mean, sometimes exhaustion in the morning with the, with the benzodiazepines, um, I apologize if this is too much information, but there were some sexual side effects early on with the, with the SSRIs, which is a common thing. Um, uh, the, um, uh, the other thing also with SSRIs is you get headachy and you feel like crap for the first month. Um, and actually that was sort of bad timing because... We had already, my wife and I had already planned a trip to New Zealand, and um, uh, and I got started on the SSRIs and was just kind of, you know, working with the therapist and so on. Um, but actually, actually, what happened was I switched SSRIs right uh, maybe like two weeks before, and so even though it wasn't as bad as that first time through, I was still like kind of headachy and everything for that whole trip to New Zealand, which was, um, you know, we still managed to have a fun enough time and nice hikes and everything. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I didn't have that I noticed anything worse about the depression during that transition time, but it's, you know, I mean, you just kind of feel like crap the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, did you 
I knew, I mean, I knew I had, I mean, yeah, that's it's a hard question. I've always been anxious, uh, like, you know, insomnia and everything when I was little, um, uh, you know, just the, the, the shy kid in the room and whatever else. Um, uh, and so um, that doesn't mean everybody who's shy has anxiety or whatever, but um, uh, um, so Kind of, but I thought I so you know in, in sort of a bad way. Like I thought I had OCD, which I turns out probably is not what I have. Um, uh, I, I I thought that I had panic disorder, which is also I think not the the right thing. I think it's just gener it's now it's generalized anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder. The the diagnoses that I have, um, and um, yeah. So I mean. You know, I went went to the psychiatrist and did all like all the checklists and everything, and um, uh, and it took a, sort of a while. I mean, that was actually actually one other thing. At least for me, that wasn't the end of it. Like the first round of checklists, the psychiatrist thought that I had also OCD, um, and um, and then I sort of just took that as as true. But then I. I seen somebody more recently and they're like and, and sort of talked through a little bit more and they're like no that really just doesn't sound like that's what that is it just sounds like generalized anxiety disorder so sort of as with a lot of the autobiographies um, you know I knew that I needed something I knew that there was something took years really to sort out what that was so yeah other questions Anything? yeah sure medication you from doing anything? no no um, uh, yeah, I had um, the closest thing is when we had infants, when the kids were infants and they were sleeping in the room with us. Um, I decreased um, basically to actually. I think I even stopped for a while the the uh, the benzodiazepine because sometimes the kid would end up in the bed and I didn't want to roll over on top of the kid in the bed. Um, so. Um, uh, that's the closest. I mean, you know, like acutely um, when I was having major panic episodes and I would have to take more sort of medium doses of, of quick acting benzodiazepines, that would get me tired and it would make me need to go to sleep. So like in that sense, but it doesn't have any long term. Like I can't, I can't do X because I'm on medication or I can't do, uh, you know, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, sure. Is there like a, like a data saying like what are the chances of like misdiagnosed? Like um, well, I think that psychiatry is inherently a very hard thing, right, to do, right? I mean, because you're just dealing with checklists and symptoms, and there's not, like, any, like, clear, you know, genetic test or clear, you know, um, uh, objective measurement. Um, so, I mean, so the the... the the misdiagnosis in my case wasn't such a bad thing, right? Because the treatment for OCD is also SSRIs, so it's, you know, and it worked. And so um, I guess, I, yeah, I don't know what the statistics are. Um, I think that probably in psychiatry in general there are changing diagnoses, but even in other fields of medicine too. Like, you know, somebody will get, uh, I'll get, uh, uh, you know, a, so, so something diagnosed early, and then and then it turns out, oh wait, no, it wasn't that; it was something else. It's like a rare disease that we didn't consider. So, I mean, medicine is never perfect in any field. And psychiatry maybe suffers from that a little bit more because of the nature of the way things are diagnosed. But um, but yeah, I don't know the numbers. Yeah, sure. Going on what he said, I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but how often is depression misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a great question, um, and um, and that is something that is um, that is a very common example um, for a lot of reasons. So bipolar disorder, kind of briefly, is is characterized is used to be called manic depressive disorder, but um, it's characterized by periods of mania and periods of depression, um, and uh, what. A lot of people with bipolar disorders experience is they actually like the periods of mania because they're highly effective. They don't feel like they need to sleep. They actually feel euphoric. They feel like they're highly productive. And they actually can be quite productive during the manic periods. Um, and then the depressive periods are when they 
don't feel so good. And so that is when they will go seek help. Um, and so if a person is only coming in seeking help when they're depressed, it's actually quite common for somebody with bipolar disorder to get initially diagnosed with depressed with major depressive disorder, um, which can be a problem because SSRIs taken on their own can worsen the manic episodes in somebody with bipolar disorder. Um, people with bipolar disorder sometimes take SSRIs with a mood stabilizer like lithium or valproic acid or uh, these other things that are sort of um, uh, 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 calm the ma manic episodes. Um, uh, but um, yeah, I mean, there are examples of people who's, who's, uh, who, who, especially if they have bipolar 2, which means the manic episodes aren't as significant, then all of a sudden the SSRIs sort of make the manic episodes more significant. They might not even know, or they might not want to, to, to be medicating away their, their, their manic episodes because um, they like them. So that's, that's a, that is a common um, thing that I don't, know, I don't know the answer to, but other than, yeah, it does happen. And, it, and especially bipolar disorder is one where that happens pretty frequently. Yeah, sure. For, uh, so if what? Is that, sorry, my, my symptoms were? Or like um, well, um, I mean, a lot, it's diff, different in general, some people have, you know, depressive episodes that are spread out in time. Um, uh, some people have. For me, my symptoms when it was sort of that acute phase were very much ongoing. Um, these days, they do come back at times. Um, they get, there are times that things get worse. Um, it's, uh, I think I, I probably made this analogy, it's this long convoluted analogy that probably only I find interesting, but I'll say it anyway, because why not? Plus, if you watch the video, you probably heard it anyway. Um, so when, when I was in college, um, my dad had a stroke and nearly died, but didn't. Um, and then he um, uh, was sort of very different after that, very much calmer and more, um, uh, and more sort of, um, uh, um, uh, never very temperamental, but but like noticeably like less temperamental afterwards. Um, but in the um, uh, in the fifteen years, twenty years, however long it's been since then, um, he's sort of the sort of new lease on life thing has kind of died down for him. Um, for me, the nature of what I have never goes away; it's always there, um, and you know that's in a way not a great thing but on the other hand like I every year I'll get a good reminder about like what uh, what I went through um, and so I always get like that sort of I get to I, I don't get to forget um, the sort of new lease on life of like being away from and, and being healthy and, and appreciating my health um, so um, so uh, I mean mental illnesses in general Cures for them are hard to come by. I don't know of any. And then there's also, like, you know, people debate. I, to, to me, personally, I'm happy having my symptoms well managed. And I wouldn't want to never be nervous again in my life, for example. Um, so, or never be sad again in my life. Um, so, you know, um, that's, that's, yeah. I think everybody's experience, though, is different depending on severity and things, yeah. Um, so, um, if you're treating uh, depression with like careful drugs and uh, treatment, uh, is it possible for depression to suddenly come back, or just yeah, no word? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, it, yeah. Um, you know, like when when um, f flare up or whatever you want to call it for me when that happens is. Um, is uh, not not necessarily always triggered by something that I can point to. So um, I mean, of course, everybody has times that they're sad, everybody has times that they're anxious. I often can point to that. Um, but but sometimes it's just like yeah, things got things have gotten worse over the last month, and I can't even figure out. I don't know why. It just is. Um, and then uh, you know, I sort of. Get get better at maybe it's because I maybe it's because I've slacked off on exercising or whatever. Um, get better at exercising. Get better at sort of self-managed self-care and so on. Um, 
Uh, but um, but yeah, yeah, they can certainly come back uh, and. Um, you know, it's so so. You know, it's also something that just to be aware of for myself is to always be alert for if they come back. Um, so, but yeah, certainly they can. Um, and I mean, some people, you know, for some people, they they get treated and then never have problems again for the rest of their life, and that's fine too. Um, uh, it's um, you know, yeah, it's, everybody's different in that respect as well. Yeah, sure. Is there The, the, the what? The Truman, I, the, the, the Truman Show. The Truman Show. Oh, yeah. Um, so that it depends on the source of the delusion. So, um, so uh, I mean, that falls more generally into the broader kind of delusions um, uh, aspect of things. Um, and, uh, and in fact, the depression that I had, had included delusions and some psychotic features during sort of the worst of it. Um, uh, for me, as with most people with depression plus psychotic features, um, as the depression was treated, the psychotic features resolved on their own. Um, that's different from um, people who have psychotic... Uh, so, so, so psychosis is a symptom, it's not a disease. So it's, it can, can be a symptom of severe depression, although not always. Um, can be a symptom of certain types of medication or drugs or chemicals um, and can be a symptom of schizophrenia and, um, and even other things like obsessive compulsive disorder and so on. Um, and so with schizophrenia though, um, schizophrenia is harder to treat effectively. Um, there are treatments but there's a lot more sort of like um, uh, cost-benefit analysis that goes in. SSRIs are pretty safe and work pretty well for a good fraction of people. If they don't, then you start having other treatments that you start having to explore. But um, yeah, so anyway, the short answer is, like for me, the psychotic features that I had have completely resolved since I've been treated effectively. Um, uh, for people with schizophrenia, the psychotic features are more sort of core to the symptoms of the disease and harder to resolve um, uh, without, uh, and again, the treated disease itself is harder to treat as well. Um, yeah, sure. So if someone is diagnosed by depression, can you tell them if someone actually has the same? Can I tell? Yeah. No, I don't have like, I didn't, I don't have a, a depression sensor that comes in with that or anything. Um, uh, you know, since I since I share my story, um, it's it's not uncommon for people to also come talk with me. Sometimes, um, if you look at my door, I've got all these stickers about training to help people in mental health crises and so on that I've been through because it's something that I care a lot about. Um, I guess you know for personal reasons in part, but um, uh, but no, I don't I don't have I, I I mean no no more than anybody else. You know, I can I can certainly notice if people are uh, if somebody seems sad. Um, there have been times when um, I've noticed, uh, you know, um, people's behavior changing in other ways that, that I sort of that I sort of worry about. But um, but the, the formal training that I've been through is the best is, is way more than that. Like the the personal experience is probably, if anything, would just make me think that I it would make me arrogant and think that I can tell things that I probably can't. So yeah. Any other questions? Okay, cool, yeah.